What's up everyone, welcome back to Just Finish Coding. This is part 3 of our scrolling platformer game series on Scratch 3, so let's get coding. Just finished coding. Now quick interjection here, if you've not watched parts 1 and 2, please watch them before you come here because we're picking up from where we left off and you'll be very lost. I'll leave a card for you right here. Please watch the videos and then come right back. If you're still here, I'm gonna assume that you've watched parts 1 and 2, in which case your platformer game should look something like mine, and we do have scrolling in both the axes, but there's still a lot more work to do. So in this video, what I'm gonna be doing is dealing with friction, and then we're gonna be dealing with slopes and also wall jumping. Let's get right into our code. If you want to have a friction in place, then the only way to do that is to have another variable called x velocity. And uh, the reason I'm having x velocity is because friction affects the velocity of a body and not the displacement of a body. I mean, it would only slow down or fasten a body. It wouldn't really, you know, like make a body move or anything like that. So make sure you have an x velocity variable as well. So now I'm gonna scroll down below to our main platformer engine and I'm not entirely sure where I put that. It was some pretty long code. So I think it would be somewhere here. I'm also gonna zoom out so that you can see the screen a little bit better. All right, there we are. So right here, right, you can see we have X engine seven, Y engine seven. I'm gonna remove all of that. And what I'm gonna do is to put the X engine right here, okay? And uh, I'm just gonna put in the X velocity variable inside that. And uh, I'm also going to be uh, right here setting up, uh, not set up actually, change. So change x velocity by plus two in case the right arrow key is pressed. And if the left arrow key is pressed, then we change x velocity by minus two. Oops, change x velocity by minus two. Before we use the x velocity though, uh, I'm actually going to use the friction. So I'm gonna set x velocity to be x velocity times negative eight. Okay, and uh, you can actually customize that negative eight. So the more uh, the more you have it, the less friction you'd have. So in case you want to have uh, like more friction, then make sure you make the point eight less. So set x velocity to x uh, velocity times point eight. And after this, rather than just you know using the x engine, this is going to lead to a lot of you know like pixel values and um, pixel errors because we're going to have like moving half a pixel and all of that, which Scratch can't recognize. And then we're going to have a pretty shabby game, the game would still work, but it wouldn't really work that well. So what you can do is to add another if then condition. So you can say if, and uh, on top of that, you can say if the absolute value of, and you can find the absolute value right below in the operators. So just say abs of the x velocity. So if this, okay, the absolute value of the x velocity, now you can see it's zero, but it's obviously gonna move up. If this absolute value is greater than negative nine, or yeah, I'm just gonna say greater. I was thinking of using greater than or equal to, but it's just too much work. So if that is greater than negative nine, well, in that case, not negative nine, sorry, point nine. Well, in that case, what I'm gonna do is to just change uh, uh, change x uh, by the x velocity or just use x velocity in the x engine. But instead of just using the x velocity, what I'm gonna do is to round the x velocity so that we always have pixel values and not like a decimal value. So if you have this in place, you should have done it correctly. And I'm just gonna put this entire thing into this and your code should look something like mine. Now, sorry about that guys, I'm not entirely sure what happened. My computer crashed for some reason and I think I was in operators the last time. But anyway, that would pretty much all uh, be all you have to do within your platformer engine. And you should see your code works pretty well and you kind of have a friction force acting on you. So I'm gonna stop it right there and now let's get into changing our X engine so that we not only have slope detection but also wall jumping. We're gonna have some pretty big changes in the X velocity so I'm gonna get it as up as possible. And also within your begin function there are a couple of things that I forgot to initialize and uh, those two variables are scroll X and scroll Y and we definitely need to set them up as well. And since we have an X velocity now, I'm gonna set up um, the X velocity too. So uh, set up, not level, but X velocity. And right here, I'm gonna be setting scroll X. And after that, I'm gonna set up scroll Y. All right, so now we can get into the X, uh, X engine function. And uh, before this repeat until, 
what you want to do is to grab a big if then block and within that block the condition is going to be if touching obstacle all right so only if that's the case are we going to even like get into this code so you can drag and drop your repeat until but there's actually another if then condition before that um, not an if then a loop actually and that is going to be for our slow so grab a repeat number of times from your control section and uh, within this you have to put in the slope or the steepness so you know the more or the closer it is to being a vertical block the more steep it is and if you really want the platformer to go on top of such a block then this value needs to be pretty high but since i'm going to have mostly gentle slopes just one gentle slope in my game i'm going to set up the uh, slope to be about eight now keep in mind i'm just doing this you know this uh, all this within this uh, repeat uh, number of times loop is going to be just for you know moving upwards in case of a slope so if you're moving downwards in a slope that should work just as it is because of gravity but in case it's not you might have to play around with these values a little bit and maybe try out negative values instead of positive ones inside the repeat loop all right so repeat eight and in this case what i'm going to do is to change y pos by one okay and if you're changing the y position by one it's going to um you know kind of move up and i just want to make sure that you know all this is under like checked within a run without screen refresh because if it's not then we're going to have some pretty bad errors now we can update the coordinates by just saying go to coordinates and after this you need to have another condition checker okay and uh, you want to check if it's still touching the obstacle or not so um, imagine you have a slope like this okay just follow my mouse pointer along and you want to let's say move uh, above that slope okay so what we're doing basically is moving up slightly okay and then our x engine is going to work parallelly so then we'll be moving a little bit as well so we're going to check if we move up slightly are we still touching the obstacle or not so if we are touching the obstacle then we're going to like eliminate that script right away but if we're not touching the obstacle then it means that there's some kind of a slope and not a straight vertical wall so after we just move up a little bit using like this um this repeat loop which we're setting up now then our x engine is going to work because uh, we're no longer touching a wall right here uh, i mean since the wall is this way we're not going to touch a wall here so we're going to be able to move to the left and thus move above a slope that's a general idea but if you really want that to happen you need to have an if then and you want to say if okay not touching obstacle so not just touching obstacle but we're going to say if not touching obstacle okay and you can grab a not from the operators like i said we could have actually just duplicated that but i didn't see that in time so i'm going to say if not touching obstacle then we want to stop just this repeat script or rather we want to like get out of this function basically so what i'm going to do is now head over to control and grab this block which says stop all and you may be pretty surprised because stop all is used when our code is done and the game is over but we're going to use stop all for just stopping this particular script so I'm going to say stop this script and after that we can have this entire repeat until within the if then though okay and what I'm going to do now is to head over to, uh, to the obstacles and change the costume a little bit to make sure that our slope you know works out so I'm just going to grab another rectangle uh, set the color to be zero you know black basically and um, there we go so now I'm going to set up a slope like this now we can uh, you know like move it about this way so this is going to be a pretty good slope all right this should be pretty good and uh, maybe i'll move it up a little bit perfect and what i'm going to do right now is to also have an uh, another you know rectangle just to make sure we can test out wall jumping as well i'm going to set up the rectangle something like this okay perfect so now head back to your uh, platformer code and um, here's what you need to do before we move into wall jumping you need to change the y position by negative 8 okay and this is extremely important don't mess up on this one so change y pause by uh, negative 8 and uh, the reason i'm doing this is because this script is going to include the entire function so we're never going to get into like this entire like collision checking and uh, you know movement all of that we're not going to be doing any of that but what we're going to do instead is to um, stop this run this again again we, we're not going to be uh we're like not going to we're still going to be touching the obstacle if the wall is vertical so we're going to go do this again and again and again but our screen isn't going to update though so what you have to do in the end is to change it back 
uh, what to what the position was before we embarked on this repeat loop and that is going to be back to uh, negative 8. So back to minus negative 8. So that is the idea of this. Um, don't worry if you didn't really get it. That's pretty much, uh, that's okay. Just add that in and you can under you'll understand this later. So this is pretty much going to be all you need for your, like your slope detection. And as you can see, we can move up a slope like this, but not across a slope like that. All right, that is pretty good. And now we can add in our wall jumping. Now I'm going to zoom out so that you can see better. And after this, I'm going to add in an if else. And this is going to be responsible for wall jumping. And you can put in the uh, repeat until right after the if else. Now within the uh, if statement, the condition I'm going to put is if key up arrow key is pressed. And in case it's not pressed, then I'm going to assume that the player isn't moving anymore. So I'm just going to set the x velocity back to zero. So set x velocity um, to be zero. Perfect. So after this, if the up arrow key is pressed, then we have to check on which direction our x velocity is currently moving. So if our x velocity is um, positive, it means we're moving towards the right, in which case when we bump into a wall, we move towards the left. And if our x velocity is negative, the exact opposite is going to happen. So now I'm going to have a simple condition check. Okay. So if um, x velocity is positive and keep in mind that we're using the x velocity within like this x engine as a parameter. So grab in that parameter from top. So now I'm going to check if x velocity is um, less than zero. So in this case, we're going to move, um, you know, towards the right because we're now moving in the left direction. So I'm going to say set x velocity to be 12. So set x velocity to be 12. And in case this is not the case, then I'm just going to do the opposite. I'm just going to set x velocity to be negative 12 because then it means that we're moving in the left direction. So set it to be negative 12 and that is pretty much going to be it. Now we obviously need to change the, you know, um, velocity for the y uh, axis as well. And you may be tempted to put in like change y velocity to something and then put in the y engine block. But our time, um, time in air variable just makes it so much more easy. So what we can do is to just set, um, not within the else, actually after the if else within the if. And now we're going to say set time in air back to zero. And uh, if you actually remembered what we did within our uh, engine, and oops, our code is actually interlapping. This code turned out to be pretty long, longer than I expected it to be. So now I'm going to get the platformer engine down. Okay, and let's connect these two back. Okay, so if you remember what happened in our platformer engine, we kept seeing if the y, uh, if the time in air was less than four, and only then did we change the y velocity. So what this is going to do is to replay that entire loop. And so again, the time in air has to increment four times, and we're automatically going to set the y velocity to be 16 when we're pressing the up arrow key and the right arrow key at the same time. So that's the idea. And now if you hit the green flag and you move around, you should be able to see that you have wall jumping. That's pretty cool. And since that's all I wanted to do in this video, I'm going to stop it right here. If you've enjoyed this video, please make sure you leave a like and also don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.